how's it going? This is Michael Hatzis with DubSpot, and in this video we're going to check out how to make dance music style leads. And I'll just play the sound for you to give you an idea of what we're going for. You know, something like this. So that's the sound we're going to be shooting for in this video. It's, you know, used in countless genres, made popular by Dutch House, then moved over to things like Moombatone and different global bass sounds. Now they're even using it in the trap. And that's the idea. We're going to make something similar to this and check out some different flavors of this style lead along the way. So just jumping into my browser, I can just double click that area right there and going into instruments, drag in the default preset of analog. We're going to be using analog for this particular tutorial. So the first thing we want to do is get the shape of the sound down. After that, We'll check out how to change the timbre, get the right colors. So shape usually means how the sound is going to change over time or how the volume is going to change over time. Okay, so to do that, we want to go to the amp envelope or volume envelope on this particular synth. It's called an amp envelope. Now, the default sound or the default amp envelope setting is pretty good. I just want to increase the decay a little bit. All right, so it rings out a little bit more. And I want to increase the release a little bit. So when I let go of the key, it takes a little bit longer to fade out. So I'm pretty happy with that. And now, one thing I don't like about it is the sound is nice and bright, but at the end, it, it's a little bit buzzy. Okay, and I kind of want to get rid of that buzz. So. What we want to do is we want to use a low pass filter, right? So I turn on the filter. I want to use the low pass filter to get rid of the buzz. All right, now low pass 12 is good enough for our purposes. So notice now that I take the filter cut off down and it's getting rid of any of that brightness, any of that buzz completely. And that's not what I wanted. I just wanted it at the end. So as luck would have it, we actually have a filter envelope. And one of the things the filter envelope could do is change that knob over time. All right? So I could use the envelope to change the filter cutoff over time. Okay? So if we go down here, this is my filter envelope to frequency amount. Right, so I set it to where I want it to end up, which is somewhere about there. All right, and this is kind of like a dry wet knob for the filter to change this knob over time or the frequency over time. All right, so the higher the value, the more the envelope is going to have an effect on it. So I have it kind of cranked. Right? It goes up to 16. I have it about 12, 13, 14 or so. And I would say do it to your liking or set this up to your liking. Cool, and I think that's pretty good. All right now, I just want to change a couple things. Maybe I'll hit the decay a little bit, increase it. Notice if I have a really short decay, it only takes 141 milliseconds for the filter to go from here to wherever I have it set. So I want it a little bit longer. Yeah, something like that I think is good. All right, very good. So that's pretty much it for the shape. All right, we have a nice percussive style sound. Next up, let's work on the timbre or the color of the sound. So the idea with this particular sound is that you just want to change the pitch in the beginning portion of the sound or the attack phase of the sound. That's basically it. So next up, we're going to check out different ways to achieve that. I'm just going to turn on or set the voices to mono, okay? And what that does is force me to only play one note at a time. doesn't matter how many keys I hit, it's only going to play one at a time, all right? And it's very characteristic of lead sounds, bass sounds, and it's going to help us out with our next setting, which we come over here and we turn on glide, okay? So this is kind of one of the big tricks to this particular sound. Again, what we want to do is... We want to have the pitch change in the beginning portion of the sound, and this glide is going to help us do that. All right, so I turned it off. 
sounds like that. Notice we have a step from one pitch to the next, which makes sense. All right, when we turn on glide, Pitch is smoothly shifting from one note to the next. And again, it's like, wow, that's that's the sound. So we also have a glide time. And what this does is changes the amount of time it takes to glide from one note to the next. And the higher the percentage, the longer it's going to take to jump or glide smoothly to that next note. So I just want to mention that this particular style of glide, which is a non-legato glide, is common in, you know, many synths out there, things like Massive, you could do it Silent 1, you could do it Zebra 2, has this non-legato glide, but unfortunately any of the synths that we would make this particular sound that come with Ableton don't have it. Analog is the only one, so things like Operator, Simpler, Sampler, they don't have this non-legato glide. That's why I'm using analog for this. Now there are other ways to get this pitch changing effect. And one of them is with a pitch envelope. So I'm just going to take this glide time down a little bit, maybe about 60 or so. And I'm going to jump on over to my oscillator section. And in there, we have a very simple pitch envelope. It's just a one stage envelope. You basically have how much and how long. Here's your how much, here's your how long. But that's kind of all we need for this. We just need the pitch change right in the beginning of the sound. All right, we can hear here right, that the pitch is now going up over a very short amount of time. All right, if we have it up top like so. All right, we get more like a zap kind of sound. Or we'd have to do... Right, make some lasers, some zaps, that kind of thing. Alright, so I kind of like it like this. This is the way I had it set up in the example in the beginning. So I'm just going to set it up like that. Alright, so the, the pitch is changing or going up very quickly in the beginning of the sound. So now that we have a nice basic sound, let's check out some ways that we could customize this sound. So first up, let's, uh, let's check out the LFO. Now, for like the, the dirty Dutch strain of the sound, one of the things you want to do is you want to set up a very fast LFO to pitch. Now, unfortunately with analog, the LFO does not really get as fast as we would like, especially in raw mode. So we're going to set it to sync mode, and I'm just going to crank it all the way up to uh, 132T. That's the fastest it could go. Okay, and with analog, analog has what's called destination-based modulation. What that is, is just a fancy way of saying that whatever you want to change with this LFO, you have to go to the destination. So if you notice here, there's not really any controls or modulation matrices, anything like that, that you could change. You have to go to the destination. So for instance, I want to change the pitch. So I got to go to the oscillator, oscillator pitch, and lo and behold, here is my LFO to pitch. So notice that... What I want to do is just add a little, little bit. Like I said, it's just a little bit. We don't want to overcook it. If you do it too much, it sounds like that. It just sounds more like a, an effect. Not even that's too much. So just a tiny bit, like somewhere like 0.09, 0.13. Something like that. And you can really hear it on those bends, all right? So again, that's kind of common in the, the Dutch strain of this kind of sound. All right, other things we could try is we could change the shape of the oscillator. Again, up till now, we have been using a sawtooth, which, you know, is very common in the style of sound. But we can also try something like a square wave. Or in the case of analog, we have a rectangle wave, which we could turn into a square. Okay, and we know that a square is just a very special rectangle. It's just basically a rectangle that all the sides are the same. Okay, and right here allows us to change the width of that rectangle. All right, so at very low values, we have a very thin rectangle. And as we get 
bit higher, we get a, a, a wider rectangle. And at 100%, we have a perfect square, or close to a perfect square. Because again, there's analog modeling and, you know, they make the square imperfect on purpose. So that sounds more analog. All right, so this is this this kind of sound. It's got that like old school Nintendo kind of thing. If we turn the LFO off, uh, kind of kill the release a little bit. We get that kind of sound again. That's that like Nintendo kind of like someone's running and like an old school ape video game kind of sound. All right, I'm just gonna go back to turning the LFO on. All right, that kind of thing. Now, also a really cool thing about using the rectangle wave is that we can also change this pulse width with the LFO. Okay, so again, I have this really fast LFO going, and what I could do is have it change the width of this rectangle very rapidly. Which I think it's got kind of a cool sound. So what I want to do is I want to go here and turn that an octave up so it's a bit higher pitch all right so right now I'm just gonna adjust the LFO and the pulse width to check out the different colors and timbres in there and get a sound to suit my needs and again the idea is for me to show you how to make the sound and show you all the different controls and then for you to explore and find a sound that works for you. All right, very good. So the last thing we'd like to check out on analog is unison mode. Okay, now what unison mode does is it makes, it gives the synth this big wide kind of sound. And it makes everything sound real trancy. Okay, so the way it works is you turn it on and you change the detune amount. The way unison works, or what unison is, when I hit a key, we got a rectangle wave set, so it's playing the one rectangle wave, okay? What unison mode does is it stacks up voices, or it stacks up multiple rectangle waves. If you look at the global settings right here, I have voices set to two in unison mode. So what it's doing is every time I hit a key, instead of just playing the one rectangle wave, it's going to play two rectangle waves. It works the same way for the other waveforms. All right, basically the idea is it just stacks up multiple voices, okay? Then it detunes those voices with this control right here. All right, so right now I'm playing two voices or two rectangle waves and they are detuned a bit and that's what gives it that wide kind of sound. I can also choose four voices, which is gonna make it sound even bigger. And usually when you get four, since it's, you know, four square waves playing at the same time, you want to take the volume down a little bit. Now, if you set it all the way to 100%, right, it's playing octaves. And, um, you know, anything less than that is somewhere between an octave and one cent. Cool. So, one thing I've noticed is that intervals of 12 work well or just easy to get nice quick results so try those out but you know other values gonna work as well you know depending on what the sound is so I hope you enjoyed this video on making dance leads again the object was to show you how to set up the basic sound and then show you some different controls that would affect that particular sound and then for you to kind of go and tweak and get a sound that works for you and your style. So thanks again for checking out this tutorial. If you'd like to check out my music, there are links below. Also be sure to check out dubspot.com for more music production tutorials, tips, and articles. Thanks a lot, take care. Welcome to Dubspot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. 
For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ, or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.